subjected to the ever-changing winds of the white man, who with sword in one hand and Bible in the other, swept across this land like a plague of locusts. What the people of the United States did not know was that their so-called enlightened nation was setting an example that would be followed in the 20th century by some of the worst butchers known to man, including Adolf Hitler. In his biography of Hitler, John Tolan wrote, Hitler's concept of concentration camps as well as the practicality of genocide owed much, so he claimed, to his studies of United States history. And he often praised to his inner circle the efficiency of America's extermination by starvation and uneven combat of the red savages who could not be tamed by captivity. In their efforts to deal with the original inhabitants of this land, the European and then the American governments tried many different approaches. First they tried subjugation. Then when that failed, extermination. And when that wasn't totally successful, then came the reservations. And the land set aside for reservations in the 1800s was generally the most worthless land that could be found. Indians were relocated to these lands for as long as the grass grows and the rivers flow. Unless, like in the Black Hills of South Dakota, valuable mineral resources are discovered on that land. And then the Indians are uprooted and relocated again. rich and powerful is Lord Evelyn Rothschild. Historically, the Rothschild family wealth was hidden in underground vaults. The Rothschild's secret financial records were never audited and never accounted for. Their family commissioned biographies give the illusion that their family fortune has dwindled, but researchers estimate their wealth at close to $500 trillion, more than half the wealth of the entire world. Besides their many castles, palace mansions, wineries, racehorses, and exotic resorts, the Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s. Reuters then bought the Associated Press, which selects and delivers the same news stories to the entire world, day after day. They have controlling interest in three major television networks and easily avoid media attention since they own it. Until recently, they owned and operated England's Royal Mint and continue to be the gold agent for the Bank of England, which they also direct. They control the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association, where 30 to 42 million ounces of gold worth over $11 billion are traded daily. The Rothschilds earn millions weekly just on transaction fees alone. They also fix the world price of gold on a daily basis and profit from its ups and downs. Over the centuries, the Rothschilds have amassed trillions of dollars worth of gold bullion in their subterranean vaults and have cornered the world's gold supply. They own controlling interest in the world's largest oil company, Royal Dutch Shell. They operate phony charities and offshore banking services, 
where the wealth of the black nobility in the Vatican is hidden in secret accounts at Rothschild Swiss banks, trusts, and holding companies. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless gray-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations, orchestrated wars, and sponsored the mass murder and impoverishment of millions. The wealth hoarded by this one family alone could feed, clothe, and shelter every human being on earth. We must draw the line so that New York, rooted in Dutch tolerance, will never become New Mecca. They will never forget. To explain the, the atmosphere, I can uh, describe one of my colleagues that uh, uh, was trying to help one of the kids ashore, and, uh, and the kids uh, were stepping back and, and asked him, uh, are you going to shoot me? Oh, no. 